when you embark on this journey of performing hypothesis tests and learning about them, it can sometimes be a bit confusing to understand what should be the null hypothesis and what should be the alternative hypothesis. So here are a few ideas to help you decide what should be. The null hypothesis is usually something like a status quo or something that should be the place. I have this example of a production process that should fill jars to a certain um, weight. So that weight, that supposed weight, would be the null hypothesis. The alternative hypothesis, you can think about this as the contender, the um, what should perhaps not be the case, or perhaps something you want to prove in inverted commas or show or demonstrate. That should go into the alternative hypothesis. So why is that so? Think about what happens if we, or why potentially, we will not reject a null hypothesis. Well, that could be because the null hypothesis is a good representation of the reality. So perhaps that process works exactly as it should. That could be one reason why the evidence we find will make us not reject the null hypothesis. But it could also be that the evidence which we have collected is just very weak evidence, perhaps a very small sample, and therefore we get a large variance of the sample mean, and we just don't have enough data to move away from the null hypothesis to reject it. So these are two reasons why we may decide to not reject the null hypothesis, and that's why we say not reject the null hypothesis rather than accept the null hypothesis. That last, if we were to use that last term, that would really establish that we have established that the null hypothesis is a really good representation of reality. But we should always keep in mind that we may just not have collected strong enough evidence. Therefore, we say we do not reject the null hypothesis. The only way how we reject the null hypothesis is that two things have happened. A, the null hypothesis is not a good representation of the data and we have collected strong enough evidence to show that. So that is why we reject potentially the null hypothesis. So if you want to show something or demonstrate something, you want to put that into the alternative hypothesis. But do note that I was very careful to not use the word proof. When we do hypothesis testing, we cannot prove anything, okay? Because there is always, we only make probabilistic statements, probabilistic dis decisions, right? So therefore we don't use the word proof. So even if we have rejected the null hypothesis, we usually don't say we have proven that the alternative hypothesis is correct, okay? We've just rejected the null hypothesis and we need to understand the probabilistic reasoning behind hypothesis testing. Note, however, that when we decide or when we design alternative hypothesis, that the alternative hypothesis will be sort of an inequality statement. That a sample mean is smaller than something, uh, sorry, that a population mean is smaller than something, or population mean is larger than something, or unequal to something. It never contains the equal sign. That always goes into the null hypothesis. So I hope that clarified a little bit. Perhaps you have to look at a few examples and then go back to this video to understand how we design the null and the alternative hypothesis.